Hi there, it's uh, Dave from Out There Bushcraft. Uh, I did say that I would do a, um, a video on knife safety for, I suppose, for beginners, for children, uh, for families who are thinking about introducing their children to knife use um, in terms of woodcraft and bushcraft, but also for um, the more experienced bushcrafter, just to, I suppose, give you an opportunity just to remind yourself of the basics around knife safety. Um, and even... Uh, Bushcrafters with lots of experience, when you have those momentary lapses, that's usually when your knife bites you, and I've certainly had those experiences, and I would try and, um, I suppose, spare you those learning experiences um, if I can, okay? So we're going to talk a little bit about knife safety and knife choice, really. Um, the first thing I would say is that um, there is, a, I suppose, a little bit of debate over do we want a fixed blade knife or do we want a folding knife? Um, and you need to make yourself aware of the pros and cons of those in terms of the law in whatever country you're in. I'm in the UK and the law with regard to knives um, would dictate that this would be an illegal carry and it's an illegal carry. This is an opinel and um, a rounded tip which is really useful for beginners I find. It's an illegal carry because it has a sleeve that rotates here and can lock the blade in position. Now that's obviously quite useful from a safety point of view and it also locks closed like that um, so you can't open it but when you twist it round to the slot then it can be opened up like that and then again it can be locked. Um, but having a lock and blade makes, makes that an illegal carry in the UK. Okay, You have to be able to justify having that item with you. All right. Um, from my point of view, um, I think that it's important to say that there are issues with knives that do not have a lock on them, although they would be a legal carry depending on the length of the blade. Again, um, you need to check in your country and I will put a link for the UK below. Um, so that is a bit of a problem. Um, I do like the Opinels, they're pretty easy to keep sharp um, and they're a great little whittling knife and the nice thing about an Opinel is if you get yourself one of these or you get your child one of these um, and then you progress on to something else then um, this knife just goes into your kitchen kit and it's really good for slicing things up. It's got a nice thin blade. If you're trying to use a bushcraft knife with a thicker blade, say three mil, and you're chopping things like carrots, you end up with carrots everywhere, you know, 100 yards in all directions because it acts like a wedge and chucks them off everywhere. A nice thin blade like this can easily move from your standard piece of uh, light, light whittling knife, uh, light whittling kit to something that you uh, use for preparing food so it's not a bad idea that way and um, my tendency though would be to go for a fixed blade knife um, and whatever knife you choose of course keep it sharp a sharp knife is a safe knife um, everybody says that it's absolutely true people think my goodness how can that be so well a sharp knife will cut really effectively without any real effort um, a blunt knife requires effort and then that's when knives slip and so on um, this knife then uh, is the knife that I would personally, or the style of knife I would personally recommend as a beginner's knife for bushcraft and I know people will look and say well hang on it hasn't even got a tip, there's lots of things we do in bushcraft and so on where we require a tip on the blade to, to work in certain ways, some of the finer whittling and carving techniques perhaps, um, getting a hole in a piece of wood or gouging a piece of wood to make a fire drill and so on. I've actually found that you can get away with it just by altering your technique and you can do it with a knife like this anyway. Um, this is the Mora knife, the Mora safety knife. I will put a link below to um, a, a place that I know where you can get these for about eight quid, eight English pounds, which is a, an excellent uh, price. Um, the tip is completely blunt in the sense that it's not even still sharp as a chisel edge. You could sharpen that right down to a chisel edge. It might be useful for working in certain kinds of ways, but right now it is completely blunt, okay? So, good little knife, sturdy handle, um, the relatively strong, the tang doesn't reach all the way to the end, it's about half tang. That's the metal part of the blade that you can't see that's inside the handle is the tang. Um, so it's reasonably strong. I have seen one or two of these broken through bushcraft use, um, but not very many. Um, it's got a, a decent carbon blade which is easy to keep sharp and it's got this slightly extended guard here which I think is quite useful for beginners too. 
comes in a scabbard which you can clip on your belt you can put a loop round of cord and hang it from your neck if that's what you want to do and a lot of bushcrafters do like carrying the knives there um, I tend to prefer it on my waist um, I'll show you the technique that I really like for putting this back in there without cutting yourself okay so it is as simple as this first we look you have to look at the scabbard don't reach down to your side and try and put the knife away while you're doing something else because that's when you slice fingers and clothes and you you cut the edge of your belt and you get really upset with yourself so look at the scabbard tap against the back of the scabbard click okay look and listen for the click so it's look tap click look at the scabbard tap the blade against the back of the scabbard push it in until it clicks if you're not looking and you don't do the tap there's a risk that as you put it in especially if you're holding the scabbard like that you miss the scabbard and you cut and i'm not joking you if i lightly touch with this blade because it's factory sharp but that is sharp it will cut me straight away so look tap click if your feet are moving your knife is in the scabbard it's still if your knife is still then you can move your feet okay you don't walk around with a knife out you'd put the knife away I don't care if you're taking two steps uneven surfaces in woodland of course always put your blade away okay and and I certainly prefer to have it at my waist rather than here if you're having it there around your neck have it dangling far enough so that you can turn it and have a look when you're putting it in and out but also that you can tuck the scabbard away when you're working so it's not waving in front of you because that would be a distraction. That's another thing to think about in terms of knife safety. If I'm working in woodland like this, it's winter time, January, and I'm feeling cold and shivery, I need to stop and warm up before I carry on using my knife. If I'm working in the um, in windy conditions, my nose is running, and I go to wipe my nose, I want to make sure there's not a knife in my hand as I wipe my nose, okay? If it's summertime and there's wasps and mozzies and all that kind of thing around, you can't go waving and swatting at those things when you've got a knife in your hand. You must learn that awareness and control. If you do that, then you're laughing. Um, the other thing to mention, sorry about this scabbard and another reason why I like it, and lots of the bushcrafty type um, knives have a similar design. You've got a, a little drain hole in the bottom and then you've got this thumb position here, this little thumb ridge. That's where you put your thumb to ease the knife out. I tell people to keep the knife towards either, if you're carrying it like this, towards the top of the scabbard. If it's in your belt, then it would be towards the front of the scabbard. So that way you keep this blunt top edge against here and you don't carry on taking little slices out of the inside of the scabbard. That's not such a problem with a plastic sheath, of course, but eventually when you progress onto a leather one, it would be a problem because you'd be cutting it. Um, so that's, again, getting into good habits with bushcraft is really important. So there's the knife. Now, what about using it? Well, one of the key things when you're using this knife is when you are working just pop the scabbard down when you are working and i would always recommend initially that you work with um green wood which is much easier to cut than um dead wood is because of the moisture content when you're working pop your elbows on your knees and then you work to one side of your body like this okay that's really useful because we have i'll just pop the knife down we have arteries that run along the inside of our legs if we cut those we've got a problem on our hands and we definitely don't want that so we always work first of all forward of our legs forward of our knees and we work to one side um, potentially even if we're standing next to a log or we've got our hands against the log so if you watch here if I'm working on the log here because I'm cutting I'll put the piece that I'm working on really close to the edge the reason for that is if I'm doing it over here and I slice through I'll just keep punching the tree and in a competition where I'm punching a tree I'm definitely going to lose so all I do is I put the knife and the object that I'm working with right next to the edge and then as I push my knuckles are missing the edge of the tree so I'm not causing myself to be injured um, and I think that works really effectively okay the other thing to say I'm holding it in what's called a forehand grip and that's the usual grip for beginners for most things to do there are other um, ways that we can hold the the knife but we're not going to worry about those just at this stage okay and I'm just keeping the straight arm and pushing with my body weight or with my shoulder 
to do everything that I need to do. Okay? So that's the best way to use the knife and to use the knife safely. All right? Um, my tendency, uh, if I'm using, with beginners, I'm using wood for craft items, perhaps you make a tri-stick or something like that. I like to use something like hazel, which is a good wood to work with. This is sycamore, and sycamore is good, but the thing to watch with this um, particular type of wood is... Um, certainly at certain times of year when you peel the bark off it is very damp and that causes hands to slip and so on so you've got to be just aware that um, certain timbers that you will use will have different properties and one of those could be if there's a high moisture content in the wood as there is with this that it becomes quite slippery when you're working um, you might turn the, the knife around perhaps if you're using the back of the knife to scrape bark off that would be a good example um, and all you've got to do at all times when you're using a knife of this kind is imagine what would happen if it carried on further than you mean it to. So right now, if I'm cutting with this, if, no matter how far it travels, there's nobody around, so nobody gets within arm and knife distance of me, all around me, that's what we call the blood bubble. Um, so nobody's there, and if, and if the knife carries on past the cutting point, it's not going to do too much damage. If I was to hold it here and carve, that would be ludicrous, but I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. Or if I was holding it like this and cutting towards myself, that would be a potentially dangerous thing to do, okay? And there are other techniques that we can do if we need to be cutting in that way. I'm not going to go through them right now. That'll be for a future video because this is really just the basics of knife safety. Remember that one of the main rules when we're talking about knife safety is wherever you go when you're using a knife, you must also ensure that you take a first aid kit. Um, I have mentioned that before. I will continue to mention it because it's incredibly important. Um, I carry a first aid kit in one of these pouches. I carry a main first aid kit in the bottom and an ouch pouch out there. I've called, mentioned that ouch pouch before, right? Um, I'll put a link below for a great little ouch pouch about uh, two pounds fifty um, English pounds um, fantastic got the very basics in that you need tiny little pouch fits in your pocket fits in a rucksack could even fit in a pouch on your belt if you wanted to um, you can keep it with your knife in the house and then you know when you grab your knife you grab your first aid kit too if you are buying knives of this kind for your kids I recommend that you put them somewhere out of reach and treat it as a tool not as a toy idle hands messing about with knives are usually hands that end up bright red in color so try to avoid that and um, if you keep it in a cupboard you've got a first aid kit right next to it and your child knows that when we when we collect the knife we are collecting a tool and we're going to go out and do craft type things that's a good way to develop a responsible attitude towards knives okay so that's worth thinking about okay um, I think that's probably everything that I need to cover in terms of knife safety if you have any particular questions about knives then please do get in touch with me um, and I'll be more than happy to offer you any additional advice and if you think there's anything additional that I've perhaps missed out today then feel free to add that in the comments because everything that you add on there is being shared with everybody who reads it and we extend their knowledge in that way um, otherwise I think um, that's as much as I need to say do consider those knives and um, consider the pros and cons um, but uh, certainly I would recommend something like the Mora knife safety knife and um, Mora Hultifers and I think Fiskars do one as well so there are other brands out there um, and they can be quite competitively priced uh, but I would say have a look at this one certainly I'll put a link below um, and you know consider it as a as a good starting bushcraft knife okay my suggestion would be have a look at those see what you think and who knows you could be um, over the even during the restriction you know you're getting out for your walks and stuff get yourself out there and maybe sit and do some whittling okay take care and i'll see you again soon